Hi everyone, today I have another thrift haul that I want to share with you and so we'll get right into it. I have a bunch of picture frames here that I picked up and I am planning on redoing them. This one is really pretty the way it is and I love the roses that are kind of molded onto it but I also like the cracking on it. I'm just going to brighten this up I think a little bit with some paint and I thought this would be really cute painted as well because it has a really pretty detail on it this is just an inexpensive wood plaque that you know you can find these at the craft stores and I've even seen them at Walmart now this is pretty cool this is a wood carved picture frame with an owl uh, picture in it now the picture feels like it's just a print out of a magazine or something I like it the way it is I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint it I think it would be really cute painted but I also love the wood as well so I'm not decided on this one yet and this one is just such a pretty watercolor painting. It is an original painting by someone. I'm not real fond of the frame, so I'm gonna do something with the frame. And then I picked up this lemon tree topiary. Uh, it's kind of fallen apart, but it's a good base for me to fix up and do something new with it. So I'm excited to make a new topiary tree with this. And then I picked up this shallow basket. I love these for tables or countertops. And so I'm going to just freshen this up a little bit because it's just a little bit orange. And I found this cast iron uh, plant hanger that you can put outside on your porch post or by the door. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna paint this. And then I found this cute little metal bunny hook that I think would look really cute painted. And then I've got this metal can here. This had some dirt in it, some type of a plant in there. But I'm going to clean this up and it's pretty cool the way it is. I'm not sure that I wanna paint it or do anything with it. I haven't decided, but let's get painting and then we'll, we'll see what we wanna do with it. This can was pretty dirty, so I wanted to give it a good clean, and I like to do that with everything that I paint. I have a few transfers left over that I've been wanting to use up, and so I decided to put a transfer directly on the can, and I'm not going to paint it. I applied a clear wax by Magnolia Home to seal the transfer. I painted this picture frame white and then I lightly distressed it so that the gold would come through and I white waxed it to seal it. And then I used some vintage music sheet paper and applied a transfer to that. I've been wanting to use this transfer up as well and I just really never knew where to put her. So here she's going on this music paper. There are so many things in our world anymore that try to cause us to be afraid and to shake us and to break us. And of all the things that the Lord tells us in his word, do not fear is something that he repeats to us over and over. And there's a reason for it. I used to read God's word and hope that it would be true and hope that he would want goodwill towards me. But once I understood that God really loves me and how much he loves me, everything changed. Now when I read the Bible, I don't just hope that it's true. I know that it is. Now when I read the Bible, I believe every promise of God and I believe what Jesus said. The cool thing is that hope is the blueprint to faith. Once I understood just how much God loves me, then I wasn't reading the Bible and just hoping in it. I was believing in it. Imagine the day that Jesus was crucified and his disciples were so devastated, like they had lost hope and they didn't understand that he was going to rise again on the third day until they saw him. 
When they saw him, they believed and nothing could stop them from preaching the gospel and sharing the good news. Well, no matter what the world wants to throw at us, we still have hope, we still have faith, and we still have good news to share. I'm adding just a dab of water to this little container here, and then I'm gonna take my paintbrush that's got wet white paint on it, and I'm gonna swish it around in here so that I can whitewash a bunch of these items. When I'm working on projects, I try to group them together. So like if I'm going to whitewash a couple of things, I'll do them at the same time. And then if I'm gonna paint you know, white onto four or five things at one time, I'll do that all at once. This topiary tree, I started by removing all of these lemons. They were being held in place with toothpicks. Then I mixed the gray paint with a little bit of white paint just to lighten it up a little bit. I'm starting with this small paint inlay image and it needs to be applied to the paint while it's wet. I used a damp paper towel just to dab around the paper and make sure that it was adhered good and that I didn't have any drips of water. Now I am mixing up a 50-50 mixture of a clear top coat and some water, and this is to spray onto the image to prevent it from smearing. The paint in an inlay becomes reactivated when wet, and so this is an important step in the process. I'm going to spray a light mist of this mixture onto my paint inlay images and let that dry. I'm going to start on the next step. I waited for it to dry after I sprayed it with the 50-50 water and the top coat. I thought it was dry and I went to touch it. There was a spot on here where it still had some wetness to it and I accidentally smeared the image. So I think what I'm going to do is just take some very fine grit sandpaper and distress the image and just make it look aged. And then I will apply some white paint so that I can kind of give it um, just a two-tone look and then I will seal it from there. Once the white dry brush was dry on this little pot, I sealed everything with white wax. To make the topiary tree, I just used a sprig of greenery that I already had and I cut it into pieces and inserted that into the foam ball that's attached at the top here and then I just kind of covered everything up with some Spanish moss. This is a good piece for me to practice a paint inlay on. So the first thing that I did was give it a whitewash just to tone down the wood a little bit and also to help my image show up even better. And then I picked out the image that I thought would fit best on here. 
I applied two good coats of the top coat on here because I want to make sure that it is wet enough so that I get a really good impression from my paint inlay. I don't want it to look distressed. I want to just see how much of the paint inlay I can actually get to adhere to this. I applied the paint inlay to the wet top coat and let it dry. It took about an hour and 15 minutes. After it was dry, I applied a fine mist of water with my spray bottle here, and then I used a damp paper towel just to make sure that the water got through the paper so that I could pull the paper off easily. I waited about, you know, 20, 30 seconds, and then I started to pull the paper off. I love how this looks and it's not perfect, but I love how it just has a naturally aged look. And something that really drew me to doing paint inlays is that they can be used two, maybe three times again. Once I had the paper removed, I sprayed the 50-50 mixture of water and top coat onto the image and I just did a light mist of it and I let that dry. And so this paint inlay, is completely dry and I didn't smear it so that's a good thing and it's interesting you can kind of see just a little bit of where the extra paper was around the edges and that I guess that's why it's so important to make sure that you cut around your edge uh, of your design so that you don't have that extra so I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper and see if I can just kind of camouflage that little line as well Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is now that my 50-50 uh, water and top coat are dry on here, I'm going to be able to apply the clear coat, the final top coat, and not worry about it uh, smearing.